Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for some Saturday Night Crafting. Tonight I thought I'd do a part two of my top 10 cheapo crafty hacks. So this is actually going on to the top 20 cheapo hacks. So I'll link the first one in the description box below, and it should also be in the top right-hand corner here. I'm going to dive straight in and get through all my little hacks. And um, the first one is the DIY stamp sticky platform. Now this is something I got from Jennifer McGuire and I've been using it for nearly two years now and it is a dream and I'm only just now replacing my mat. So a lot of you have a stamp platform, you've got magnets and maybe you've got no grid lines, maybe you do have grid lines. I'm going to go ahead and share with you what I do. I buy these little sheets. They're for like a no-name brand sheet for a die cutting, like a Cricut kind of machine. And all I do is I cut them down to fit my platform. So the Tim Holtz one is 8 by 8 inches. And so I cut mine to a little bit over the 8 inch line and stick it in. Now if you wanted to be meticulous and you wanted those lines all to match up with your trimmer, you could go ahead and trim that top edge off where the arrow is. I kind of like having that bit of an edge where there's nothing sticky at the top. Um, maybe I just need to try it and cut that edge off and maybe I would actually enjoy it, but then your lines will line up if you want to use the measurements on the side. Personally, I don't use any of the measurements. I just use the grid lines. So I'll line my um, card up with like the four inch mark or something if I want to do some stamping on the sides. Now, when you first take that release sheet off, it can be quite sticky. I don't like it so sticky. So we're going to go and not remove the adhesive, but we're going to make it a bit less sticky. So if you've got some talcum powder or some cornstarch, corn flour, or one of these embossing bags, you can go ahead and use some of that on your mat to remove some of that sticky so it's not quite so sticky. However, it's really easy to put too much on, like here, and you can't actually stick anything to it anymore. All you need to do is take a bit of water, take a microfiber cloth, not something that's fabric-y that's going to um, leave behind traces of fabric, if that makes sense. So the microfiber cloth doesn't shed, I think is what I'm trying to say. So if you use that, then you can remove some of that talcum powder and then you will get a really nice low, low tack adhesive. And that's perfect for just holding your card in place while you want to stamp. Now what I do is I go ahead and I put my mat in, I put my magnets on just to hold the mat down and I leave it like that. And that is my stamp platform and that's what I've been doing for the past year to two years and it's been perfect. Now, a lot of people have been asking you about cleaning your stamps. And this is what I've been doing for quite a while now. I make my own stamp cleaner. So 90% of the time I use just water, but if you need something a little bit more, this is what I do. I get some children's shampoo, the stuff that's got like no parabens, um, any of the extra nasty stuff, or I get the sort of organic, sort of quite pure, shampoo if that makes sense so this is I follow a lot of curly hair girl um, advice and so this is a good shampoo for that as well um, and then you can also use vegetable glycerin the vegetable glycerin is good for conditioning your stamp especially if you've got a red rubber stamp which I don't have very many of those and I don't really use them so I tend to only use the shampoo in mine but you can add a couple drops of glycerin and that will condition your stamp and this is coming from Lindsay the frugal crafter she gave me that quite good tip so I take this paraben everything free type shampoo and I pick a smell that I really like and I put in about two to three drops depending on the size of your bottle so I filled up the bottle about 90% full of water and then about two to three drops of shampoo and give it a really good shake and that does the trick and you'll see in a minute when I show you my next little stamp cleaning trick and technique um, that you do get quite a lot of soap in there so use cheap cleaning tools when you're going to clean your stamps you don't need a stamp and scrub um, thingy you don't need all the fancy gadgets it's really not worth your money I use a microfiber cloth and I've been using it for years so here's my microfiber cloth I bung it in the wash with all my normal laundry I don't even rinse it I just chuck it in and this is just water and my cloth and it's perfect every time now let's say you did some stamping you used your black ink or you used a different kind of ink and then you left it a little while maybe a few days I'm gonna point at my watch for a second yeah you left it for some time <laughs> um, and it's stuck on a bit more that's when I would use my cleaning spray or if I've got muckle over my desk I'll use my stamp cleaning spray which has got the shampoo in it and it works a dream and it comes off really nicely as well 
However, sometimes we have really intricate stamps and they get really messy and we get this kind of black crud going on or whatever color you've been using. Now, photopolymer stamps do stain, so this won't take off staining, but can you see all the little black that's stuck in there? This bugs me <laughs> because if you then go and use like a yellow, you're going to struggle and you might pick up some of the black. So I spritz it with my homemade stamp cleaner and I get one of those cheapo toothbrushes out, the ones you get in hotels, or your old toothbrush. But I like a flat toothbrush a bit more than a ridged one. I just find it works a bit better for a level clean. And I literally just scrub it. <laughs> and that's it. And this is probably a minute or so and I get it pretty darn clean. You'll see in a second I took another minute and it's perfect. So here it is, finished, two minutes, done. And it's really satisfying using that toothbrush as well. So if you want to clean sticky, let's say you've got your stamping block and you somehow got adhesive on it, some tacky adhesive. This is the sticky tacky stuff, the permanent hard dried stuff. This isn't going to work for you. I'm pointing at my mat because I get glue on my mat all the time and I use a tacky glue when I craft and it gets stuck. One of these little erasers is the best investment you can make. I've had mine for 10 years. They don't die. And they're really, really, really hard wearing and long wearing. So these are um, an adhesive removable er eraser. I'll link everything I can down below for you that I can find, um, just so you can have a starting point. But this thing has lasted me about 10 years and all I do is I rub it on my block and it pulls off all the sticky. I do the same on my desk every week. But what you've got left over sometimes is that still that slightly tacky residue. And you can take rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, or hand sanitizer, a little bit on your microfiber cloth, and give it a little rub after you've removed it with your eraser um, thingy, and it comes up beautiful. So you can see here it's all coming off. There's nothing left. It dries really quick because it's just rubbing alcohol. Um, the hand sanitizer will do the same, and it just pulls off that last little bit of tack. So I take my blocks, and I make my own homemade stamps on them and I get the adhesive left all over it. So this has got some of the foam on it and the adhesive that was stuck to the sticky back foam. And all you need to do, again, is just give it quite a firm rub with this removable adhesive and then you can just peel off the sticky off of your little adhesive eraser thing. Take your alcohol, rub it all over, and it's brand new. Absolutely fine, no sticky, nothing, perfect and ready to go. So if you have that on your desk, it's exactly the same process. So, when you're creating, you want to use an easy cleaning surface. This is my desk. I have a glass desk. It's actually my husband's. I stole it because <laughs> um, he wasn't using it. And then I take an IKEA mat. So this is an IKEA desk mat, which costs something like three or four quid pounds. And I just cover it in sticky back vinyl. So when my mat gets really gunky and horrible and it's not usable anymore, I peel it straight off and chuck it in the bin and put another layer on. So I buy this sticky stuff from any home shop. It's the stuff you would cover your kitchen counters in if you want to redo them and have a different pattern on your counters. So it's got a little bit of a heat resistance to it, uh, not much, so do make sure you use a heat mat, but it's very easily wipeable. And I buy the long roll, and then I can go ahead and stick it on my mat, and I can cover it in one big go. Now moving on to number six, we're going to clean our brushes with ease. Now most of these craft brushes are made just like the makeup brush. So you can go and buy makeup brush cleaning products. This is just something I ordered off Amazon. It looks like a glorified oven glove with lots of bumpies. And all I do is take a little bit of washing up liquid or dish soap. I put a little dot on my glove. Now bear in mind I'm doing this over the kitchen sink normally, but I'm trying to show you so I'm doing it on my desk. So what I do is I put a little blob on my glove, I rub about five brushes worth, get them wet and rub them, and then I rinse them really thoroughly doing the same rubbing motion but under running water. And you will get all the ink out of your brushes. It will stain your brushes, the ink will stain, but all that ink will come out and it'll be like new. And this is the top tip I can recommend for these kind of brushes. So I have a little jar, like you can see there, a little tub, and I just shove all my brushes in there, and then I take them all, and I give them one big scrub in the sink, and then get them all clean, and we're good to go, and I put them all into my clean brush tub. 
So shout it loud and proud. This is about declaring your hard work. This is the first time I found a stamp that I absolutely love for the back of my cards. And the British stamp maker is the company I bought it from. Now, it wasn't the cheapest out there on the market by far, but it is the most satisfactory stamp I've ever bought in my life. This supports a small business as well if you're buying local and somebody that has handmade it themselves. This company was fantastic, so I emailed them what I wanted, and she was so lovely. The lady Jody gave me all the time in the world to get my design perfect, and she designed it because I am no good on the computer. <laughs> um, she designed the whole thing and then created it for me and sent it out to me. So if you want a good brand and you're in the UK, this is a top-notch one, and I'm so happy with it. Make sure you are labeling your cards and sharing with everyone who made that card. Now, number eight is label everything. I have found this to be a massive help in my office. I have all these little tubs, these little gray tubs in different sizes, different shapes, and I've gone ahead and labeled them with my label maker. And it has made my life so productive and so easy, and I find it so quick to find anything I need. And that makes a massive difference in being useful with your products. Number nine, keep your main tools up front. You will use them the most, reach for them, grab them, keep them around your workspace so that they are easily accessible and not lost very easily. This is my desk. It looks a hot mess, but this is how I function and everything is right there that I need, right up and close and personal, and I can use them. Next is storage. This is the last tip that I've got for you, storage. Find something that works for you and go for it. So I use this makeup storage that I found at B&M in the UK. It's for lipstick, it's for mascara, it's for hairbrushes, but it works a dream. It holds all my things exactly how I want them to be held. And so I just have a whole bunch of those and they were cheap. I bought some ink pad storage from Amazon. You can spray paint it. You do have to glue it together, but it's right there in front of my face. So I can get those ink pads anytime I need. I also have another one under my desk, which is by my feet, uh, just because I'm limited on storage in my office. This is my peanut butter jar, jar that I use for my strips and it works fantastic. So use whatever you've got. If it works, use it, but use some storage because it will save your life as a crafter. It will make things so much easier and productive. I hope you enjoyed tonight and I hope you had a fun time seeing some of my tips and tricks that I use. Don't forget to check out the first one if you've not seen it already and please do subscribe. I would love to have you come along for my ride every week. I try and do Wednesday and Saturday night crafting and um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.